This is no ordinary road. It's part of the UN buffer zone in Cyprus. Neutral ground separating the Turkish north from the Greek south since the 1974 conflict ended in a ceasefire. Tonight, UK soldiers on UN peacekeeping patrols are trying something different, expeditionary patrolling. I wasn't allowed to sleep out in the buffer zone overnight, but the soldiers agreed to film themselves to give us this exclusive insight. No heating facilities, just with the sleeping system, minimum sleeping kits. It's quite cold. People try to cross the border from north to south, so we have to do the patrol at night as well. And if we find anything suspicious, then we have to report to the chain of command. If we do the expedition patrol, then it's quite easy to deploy from here then rather than from the barrack. It's quite effective and fast. Where I'm stood now is the narrowest part of the buffer zone here in Cyprus. It's 3.2 metres wide, which is the distance between the balconies above me. On this side, we have the north, and on this side, we have the Republic of Cyprus. And it shows the importance of the UN peacekeepers staying out overnight, that they can react very quickly if either of the opposing forces commit any violations. Keeps people sharp, keeps people on their toes, and they are more alive to to changes and expeditionary patrolling is a means of um, having a greater presence in the buffer zone to really increase our ability to one deter the opposing forces uh, the other is to reassure the opposing forces um, and it is also to be able to have a larger presence to um, deter any civilian incursions into the buffer zone as well. These are the abandoned flats where soldiers from 10 Queen's Own Gurkha Logistic Regiment stayed overnight. Everywhere you look, objects left behind, each one telling its own story of destruction. We have to come up here every patrol and to do the patrol, we have to look from here. Is there any suspicious activities? I'm currently stood on one of the UN observation posts in the buffer zone in the centre of Nicosia. Over here, we have the north side where we've just heard the call to prayer. And on this side, we have the Republic of Cyprus where we've just heard church bells ringing. It gives you a real sense of just how close the ceasefire lines are at some areas along the buffer zone here. These expeditionary patrols are also being used in the rural area of the buffer zone. So this is uh, OP89. As you can see, there's no doors, um, there's no windows. Um, and plus, like I said, it's a, a building with a roof, so it's giving us some kind of protection from the elements. Um, a couple of us have packed ponchos, so we can use that, utilise that for the doors and windows to try and keep the wind out. So um, we should get a comfortable night's sleep. The patrols that we were doing before, there was obviously a vehicle out with two um, soldiers in it. Um, but there was only them that covered an eight-hour period um, and before another patrol come out with another two uh, soldiers. And like I said, that whilst on the patrol we're looking out for any civilian hunters, uh, any refugees that could have wandered onto the buffer zone. Um, Greek position um, at night is lit up, um, very easily to be seen, where the Turkish position is in darkness. The buffer zone in Nicosia has been in place since 1974. It marks the spot where both sides were at the time the ceasefire was called. Although there hasn't been violence in decades, emotions still run high in the world's last remaining divided city. In 2021, the UN hosted an informal meeting between the Greek Cypriot and Turkish Cypriot leaders, but a formal peace agreement has never been signed. Until there is a resolution to what is known as the Cyprus problem, these UN peacekeepers can't afford to be complacent in their methods of keeping the peace. Sophie Kakriannis, Forces News, Nicosia. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel.